So actually American golden plover is just here now. So I'm gonna try. Have to go in position and see I'm just hiding here behind a wall and uh, we'll see what happens. If it Both American golden plover and Pacific golden plover is two very rare birds in Norway and in Europe for that matter. And I think this is actually the first time ever they've seen together in, uh, in Europe like this, especially in Norway. I tried really hard to get them in the same frame, but it's actually very difficult because the Pacific golden plover seems to be a little bit aggressive and chasing both the European golden plovers around and also the American golden and, and the American golden plover is also chased by the European ones. So, so he stays a little bit by himself on the on yeah outside the crowd basically. So, so to get all three species or even the American and the Pacific one in the same frame was very difficult to do. So I did get one photograph though, uh, which was super cool. So American golden plover and Pacific golden plover, plover has always been considered quite a challenge to pick out from, from the flock of European golden plovers uh, for European birders. But if you look at this juvenile American golden plover, just look, it's quite a different bird actually. It's a completely different bird. It's has this small elongated uh, slender body shape almost like someone has pulled his ass out on the back because he has this long primary projection giving a very uh, very pointed uh, look to the back also on complete lack of, of, uh, of golden tones in the plumage except a little bit for the head very big eye and long and uh, very wide white supercilium gives him quite a quite a strict impression <clears throat> also very long legged but this can of course be difficult to see uh, when it's in the grass and the field but uh, this very gray coloration more reminding of a gray plover than actually the golden ones and the white supercilium and black cap is what stands out most on this bird um, together with the with the long pointed wing tips. Normally you can see four or even five primary tips uh, uh, on the primary projection of this bird. The wing tips usually behind the tail and uh, and which is quite different from both uh, especially the Pacific one but also from the European golden plover. This is uh, a North American bird breeding in northern North America and winters in South America and Brazil and Peru. Here on this flight shot, make, look at the armpits. They are gray on this bird, which is something it has together with the Pacific golden plover, while the European golden plover has white armpits when it takes off. This is a uh, European golden plover. Just look how... how more much more richly colored it is it is much finely much more finely spotted on on the back giving a much more spotted impression with huge uh, golden spots that gives him a much more colored uh, gives a much more colored bird it's much more of a gentle impression as well in the face so with a smaller supercilium, not as contrasty look as in the in the gray plover or even in the Pacific golden plover as you will see later. Legs are not ver not very long compared to the Pacific and and the American one, and quite a small thin bill on this bird as well. European golden plover can vary quite a lot in coloration. That must be said. Some are more gray, grayish, and and some are are quite rich like this. Just look at the difference of these birds. It's two very different birds. The American one in the bottom there, and the European in the in the top. So this is the Pacific golden plover. <clears throat> this is again. Not a not very similar to the American one, but f but can actually be very difficult to pick out from from the European uh, golden plovers. 
It has very long leg and very round body shape. Uh, short primary projection wingtips are are barely as long as the tail or even shorter than the tail sometimes and this of course gives him a very front heavy heavy look so deep breast and and a big head and this is not a juvenile bird this is actually a, a adult one in not breeding so that means he has much more bigger black centers to the feathers on the back and in the coverts give him quite a dark back as well some juveniles will be more richly colored on the back and, and more finely spotted just as the european one supercilium quite obvious and giving also this black capped uh, appearance here is digging for a worm i'm actually not sure how they find the worms if they listen for the worms because the worms they are they are living under the surface, so they don't really see the worm itself. So if they look for some slight movements on the topsoil layer, or if they actually stop listening for the worms when they chew, chew through the soil, I'm not sure how they manage to catch them. Another obvious feature on Pacific Golden Plover, which all of them have in all plumages, is the very long bill. So this is a very good feature to, to look for when you, when, you, when you think you have a Pacific Golden Plover in front of you. Again, long legs can be very difficult to see when they're standing in a grassy field, but this long bill and, and quite strongly pattern in the head is, uh, and, sh and the short, short wings are what you're going to look for. Again, very round shape, body shape and front heavy uh, look on the bird. Pacific Golden Plover, of course, being Asian bird, winters in China, Southeast Asia and all the way down to Australia. Here, Again, listen to the call when it takes off and, and make note of the grey armpits. What I of course want to, would love to is to get both the Pacific Golden Plover and the American Golden Plover into the same frame. That would be fantastic. It's very rare that these two birds hang together in Europe and uh, both of them are quite big rarities in Norway. <laughs>